Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another Hewlett Packard 3312A function generator with modulation and voltage control and yeah, a lot of features. This is really a feature packed, quite modern. Uh, also, the size and the weight and everything is really nice and modern. But this one is, the, the model was released in 1974 and they, they probably made this in more than 10 years. So it can be from 40 to 50 years old. It's that old, really. But this one is in a nice, nice shape. It's not nasty or anything. So... Yeah, what else can I say? The frequency range goes from 0 0.01 Hz and all the way to 13 megahertz. And uh, yeah, the rest of the the voltage control, uh, I think it's also your synchronization is at the front. Let's uh, look at the back. That one is voltage control and external trigger or internal trigger single or multi and of course the voltage selector and look at that a nice modern iec connector that is a little bit cool for 1974 there's one little detail about this one look at that here at the middle of the bottom side there's a really really deep oh, this is nasty it's I hope it doesn't touch anything. But as always, with this kind of old stuff, we better open and inspect a little bit. This is the bottom view. Really, really beautiful Hewlett Packard quality as always. They never disappoint. The build quality is just another level from that time. Here we got those multi-function potentiometer and switches. And they're made in a really cute way. Yeah, we got two of these. Of course, they need to compact stuff with multi-functions to save space on the front because it is really a compact compact unit what is that that is the synchronization with a nice shielded cable this is very very soft for a shielded cable we got some big trimmer capacity so this one is really big this is quite normal and that was my concern. That was this big nasty dent here at the bottom. So somebody dropped this or threw it out or whatever they did. Look at that nasty. But I think I can repair this. But there's nothing to be afraid of. There's a big, big safe distance here at the bottom. And here's the shield between the two circuit boards. And it's also shielding from the power supply and this is the top side of course we got the power supply at the rear closest to the transformer well, that's some funny little capacitors standing like that and also this is a little bit of a rare side to see this kind of big capacitors not being held down by something because I mean Normally, Hewlett Packard always did that so they could handle really, really a lot of G's for some reason. I think those capacitors aren't original, those. And you also see them here. You can see the solder job is actually pretty good for a repair job. But you can also see some little fumes here and little solder blob there and 
this is a little bit under the standards of the other solderings. But still a pretty good repair job. Yes, it's all over the place here. Those were, they've been replaced. It's also funny to see those two transistors here in the driver. So this is, will be the output driver. We start small and we go bigger and bigger. Nice gold plated circuit board. And it is, of course, made in USA. <laughs> they needed to add a little sticker there. All the shadow switches, switches there are like really, really good. And, and look at the, there's a little extra part, a plastic part here. So those three, they can be placed further down where connections and circuits there. Are. And the other switches there, up there. This one that's a lot longer, yeah. Good, good quality uh, film capacitors for high accuracy and all that. That will be the gold plated contacts between the two circuit boards. I bet that is the sign converter with all the diodes and resistors like that. And we've got two of them. Why? Isn't that just cool? All those extra features. <laughs> so many things to push here. Oh, maybe you have already seen this, but this is the one megahertz frequency range and there is a knob missing. But I don't know if you know my lab, have you? Have I? shown my little stockpile of goody goodies and this is just the lab I have down here there's another lab upstairs where I also keep a lot of stuff and yeah that is the little office area so of course I can just go and find my little goody goody bag of of uh, inchy screws and special stuff for HP and what do you know that oh I need to clean this a little bit but I bet it's more or less the same size and type oops or if it's them no this is not the right color maybe I can find some other colors oh that is probably so I put everything here in more or less uh, normal. I expect one kilohertz and I put everything, push the calibration, push the calibration. So that means it's probably not running with um, offset or symmetry. Uh, I didn't use the sweep bar, sine wave and all that. So all we have to do is try and power it up. So that was zero watts. So that means this switch is indeed mains and immediately look at that we got a little pulse and there there you have it so is this the variable like that so that will be the variable or we can give it ooh, ooh, ooh. A lot of output and the potentiometer is always a good idea to check the potentiometer is nice and stable so what have we got this is as accurate as I can have it and it's 1.05 kilohertz so I would expect that to be pretty good and accurate so far Ooh, that is a beautiful sine wave. What else can you do? Triangle. That is also beautiful. Square wave.
Oh, this switch needs to be handled a little bit. So that was 10 kilohertz. Hundred Ooh, there's a little bit of distortion there, not visible. But I didn't load uh, the output uh, correctly, so I'm using high impedance at the moment, so that's probably why. Let's crank up the juice. So that is nearly 11. Oh, it should have been 10. And then, oh, and then we have a little bit of drop at 13.6 at my maximum is 14.2. So there's a little bit of margin and it's really, really, of course, this is analog, right? Super duper fast and stable. Here is the built-in modulation. This is, of course, AM modulation and you can you can do it with uh, many different ways here this is of course the variable speed or frequency of the AM and I'm running AM on top of a quite fast main carrier I think this one here is oh this is oh this is how much look at that Oh, and we can overdrive it. So this is 100% amplitude modulation. How about that? But it can also do frequency modulation. So here we go. I just zoomed in on the oscilloscope, and now we can play with the... Oh, that is real fast frequency modulation. And there you have it. Whoa, whoa. It's probably going to sound like a little bit like that, huh? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. And this is, of course, how much. And this one is the speed. Alrighty then. But I really want to play with voltage control and see how that works. Oh, we can also, we can also play with the sweeper. How is that working? So if I... Oop! Ooh, yo yo yo! Now it's going. So that is not a sine wave, but this is a sweep. Yeah, so that is a soft tooth modulation when it's doing it like that, isn't it? Before I start playing with voltage control, I forgot to show how the symmetry works. So if we look a little bit at the oscilloscope here, so click symmetry and then, oh, oh dear, that was wrong. Look at that. Ooh. And I bet that will sound very, very cool. And here is, yeah, 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 of course. This is a little bit of, if you're in square wave, you can of course change the duty cycle like that. Very, very nice. I love it. So now I'm using the voltage control input and an external generator. So let's try and look here. So this is the external generator. If we turn this off, it goes of course back to normal. And the... Uh, we can change the frequency to 1 hertz, so it goes like that. So this is frequency modulation, and uh, by changing the amplitude, we can change how much, and we can also change the offset, and this way move it. See, now it's going all the way to zero. So a lower voltage input will move it all the way to more or less stop. And then it will go up to whatever frequency we have set the dial on the meter. See, so I can just give it plus a few volts. It hits nothing. It's it's aha. Uh -huh. So it's oversaturates at four volts. So it's plus minus four volts. This input, and this is zero again. Okay. So how is it sounding if we play a lot 
a little bit with this. So this is frequency modulation. So this is the volume. And now we sweep it. <laughs> so if you're using voltage control you can you can make a little synthesizer that easy see here's what i've done here's a four volt battery to take the voltage negative and this way stopping the output so here we got a positive voltage via some switches and some resistors uh, potentiometers here to set their different voltages and that will give you different frequencies and also different notes if you tune this so this is C D E so you can play uh, a little tune if you want to <laughs> yeah it's a lot of fun but I think that was more or less all I wanted to show about this fantastic Hewlett Packard machine so thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.